Hi and welcome to the first of two short tutorials that I hope will just help explain the images we obtain when we scan the tendons and ligaments on the back of the cannon region of a horse. Uh, the images that we're going to be looking at here are obtained from a front leg but a hind leg is very similar. So if we just start with a bit of a brief explanation about how these images are obtained. Um, the, on the transverse image here we're getting a cross section of a slice through of the leg at the level of the probe, starting from the skin and going through to the bone. Uh, the images obtained as the emitted ultrasound waves travel into the soft tissue structures, and then at each boundary between structures, some waves are reflected back to the surface, while other waves continue deeper. And then these reflected waves are detected and converted into an image. Uh, some boundaries will reflect all the ultrasound waves, including bone surfaces, which results in a bright line beyond which nothing can be seen. So if we start high up in the leg, there are four main structures that can be seen. So starting at the skin, we've got the tendons of the superficial and then the deep digital flexor muscles, followed by the accessory ligament of the deep digital flexor tendon which is also known as the low check ligament or the inferior check ligament, and then the suspensory ligament. The horse has no muscle below the knee, so the muscles that flex and extend the fetlock and pastern joints are found above the knee and are joined to the bones of the lower limb via these long tendons. The tendon of the superficial digital flexor muscle is closest to the skin on the back of the leg, and you can see it here slightly wrapping around the tendon of the deep digital flexor muscle that lies underneath it. Next comes the accessory ligament of the deep digital flexor tendon which is a short ligament running from the back of the knee and it merges with the deep digital flexor tendon about halfway down the cannon air region. And then finally the suspensory ligament is the deepest structure of all lying against the cannon bone and between the splint bones. And then below the splint bones, the suspensory ligament splits to form the suspensory branches that then attach onto the sesamoid bones. So looking then at the longitudinal cross section, this is obtained by rotating the probe 90 degrees so that it's angled along the length of the tendon and it gives us this nice image of the fibre pattern. So we should see the fibres of the tendons running parallel to the skin except for the fibres of the check ligament that are slightly angled as it takes this diagonal path up towards the deep flexor tendon. At the lower end of the image you'll see the suspensory ligament disappear as it splits and is no longer visible on the midline view. So if we start with the superficial digital flexor tendon this is the most common tendon that we find injuries in and gives us that typical bowed tendon appearance and that's because it is straight under the skin so any swelling of this tendon is the most visible. As we go down the leg the tendon becomes slightly thinner and flatter wrapping around the deep digital flex tendon. If we look on the transverse image you'll see the speckled appearance of each tendon and this results from the subdivision of each tendon into bundles of fibres surrounded by connective tissue that cause low levels of reflection of these ultrasound waves and a speckled appearance. So then we move on to the deep digital flexor tendon, which is this oval shaped tendon sandwiched between the superficial digital flex tendon and the accessory ligament. Here you can see on the longitudinal view, really nice appearance of these long parallel lines which represent a good fibre pattern of a healthy tendon. Then onto the accessory ligament which starts off with this irregular rectangular structure. As the ligament approaches the deep digital flex tendon it becomes semi-lunar wrapping around the deep digital flex tendon until they merge to become one structure. And then finally, the suspensory ligament has fairly indistinct margins high up the leg as it fills this space between the splint bones. 
and the proximal suspensory is also attached tightly to the cannon bone at its origin. And then as we come down the leg, the ligament can be seen as more of a distinct round structure. And then as it splits, you can no longer see the suspensory clearly from the back of the leg. And so we change our probe position and we come round to the side of the leg to more clearly image the suspensory branches. This can be done lower down because the splint bones are no longer obstructing our view, but higher up the leg, the splint bones prevent you imaging the suspensory ligament from the side. So we go to the inside of the leg to image the medial suspensory branch and the outside of the leg to image the lateral suspensory branch and uh, the suspensory ligament lies directly under the skin. So we get a nice clear image of it when we go around to the side. And finally, you can see here, the suspensory branches attaching onto the sesamoid bones. And as you can see, you get that bright line of the bone followed by black as no further waves penetrate through that bone. So that's just a brief run through of the normal leg. Uh, I hope that's helpful and uh, there'll be a second part with some pathology.